Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. The first efforts into solving seven mysterious Tasmanian murders have intensified, with police offering rewards of half a million dollars for each cold case conviction. Heartbroken families hold hope it could spark new clues and ultimately give them closure. A mother's anguish. Coming to terms with her son's unthinkable fate. Do you believe that he was murdered? In my heart, yeah. Christopher Watkins vanished from Mayfield in August 2013. He's never been seen again. He had a, the biggest heart. He'd do anything for anybody. Police believe the 28-year-old was snatched from a box street unit and murdered. We're of the firm belief that there's several people that have an intimate knowledge of the last moments of Chris. Detectives of the seven-year-old cold case are confident a conviction is close. However, the missing puzzle piece is the body of Mr Watkins. We'll investigate every avenue we've invested that we can to, um, to bring justice to Chris. It's one of seven high-profile murder investigations now with a high price for information. $500,000, the new reward for any clues that ultimately lead to a conviction. It's really important we get closure for families in relation to these cases. Dating back two decades, other unsolved cases include Nancy Grunwald, who disappeared on the East Coast in 1993, 14-year-old Eve Askew, missing from her Fitzgerald home in 1991, Italian backpacker Victoria Cafaso, murdered on Beaumaris Beach in 1995, Paul Byrne, who hasn't been seen since 1996 in the state's northeast, Simon Crisp, infamously shot dead outside the Marawar Tavern in 2000. 13, and Helen Munnings, perhaps Bernie's most speculated missing persons case, who vanished in 2008. It's believed those never found and those who were all met the same sinister end. So $500,000 is significant and it's hoped that someone could start a new life if need be. Police believe this lucrative prompt may unravel the suspected killer's allegiances change with people and help heartbroken families like Lillian's recover from the trauma. It would give us closure and um, we'd be able to put him to rest. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. The Queensland Government has announced a snap three-day lockdown in Brisbane as health authorities try to stamp out a growing COVID outbreak there. While this situation has forced changes to the AFL fixture, for more on what this means, we have reporters Letitia Wallace and Tom Johnson standing by with the latest information. First to Letitia, who's at Launceston Airport. Now, Letitia, how has our Premier responded? Kim Peter Gutwin has declared five local government areas in Greater Brisbane as high risk. This means any travellers wanting to come to the state from Brisbane, Logan, Moreton Bay, Ipswich and Redlands will need to apply to the Deputy State Controller to enter and will be required to quarantine for 14 days. Four more community transmission cases were confirmed today, taking the number of cases in the Brisbane cluster to seven. Two of the people infected are colleagues of a previous case and another is a COVID ward nurse and her sister. The lockdown only applies to the Greater Brisbane area, but masks must be worn across Queensland in crowds and on public transport. These people have been out and about in the community and that is of now concern to Queensland Health and of course concern to me. We will have to go into a three day lockdown. This is the UK strain. It is highly infectious. I know this is a really big call. I know it's very tough. If you do arrive in Tasmania, uh, you will be placed into hotel quarantine for a period of up to two weeks. Uh, this will remain in place for the next three days and we will obviously take public health advice in terms of when that can be lifted. A flight from Brisbane to Hobart arrived this afternoon where people on board that flight were being told of the lockdown in Queensland while in the air. Those who had been in hot spots have been told to self-isolate until they return a negative COVID result. And Kim, it's a similar story here in Launceston tonight. A Virgin flight is due to touch down around 8.30 with those travellers also facing the same restrictions. OK, thanks very much, Letitia Wallace at Launceston Airport. 
Well, the COVID lockdown has also forced changes to the AFL fixture. Let's turn to Tom Johnson now. Now, Tom, the Lions are needing to stay in Melbourne. Here we go again, Kim. Yes, Brisbane is the latest club caught up in a COVID mess having to stay out of its home state to keep the season going. Now what's changed is Thursday's game between the Lions and the Magpies, which will now be played at Marvel Stadium instead of the Gabba. It's a straight swap with round 22, so the Magpies will head north for that game when the two clubs meet again. For the time being, Brisbane is making a home away from home, training at Port Melbourne this morning. Four extra players have flown in from Brisbane to cover injuries. They're now isolating until they can return a negative test. Our approach throughout last season and it'll need to be the same, it's been the same through the AFLW season, is we need to minimise risk where we can. And where there's uncertainty, um, it makes sense to try and make decisions where you um, um, uh, don't escalate that risk. I bought four pairs of jocks for with me, so uh, <laughs> I'll do the fight of laundry today. So no, we'll, we'll do whatever's required. The only game penciled in for Tasmania so far is between the Hawks and the Crows on Anzac Day, but as we all know by now, Kim, that could change at a moment's notice. Well, Tasmanian Labor has revealed its candidate lineup ahead of the May state election. But the party is dealing with a winter of discontent as it grapples with a factional feud over the King Bramia. Launching her army on a clear autumn day. This election will be fought on the fundamental things that matter to all Tasmanians. Rebecca White's election lineup has some familiar faces. There's former Launceston Mayor Janie Finlay. I'm really excited and really proud now to be part of the Labor team and taking on this electorate. High profile lawyer Fabiano Cangelosi. My concern is to see that we have a government that is adequately managing the health system, adequately managing the court system. Young Tasmanian of the year, Toby Thorpe aged just 19. My age should not define who I am and what I can achieve. Um, I've had a lot of experience at a national, subnational, and international space uh, working with young people, uh, working in policy. One notable absence on the Labor team, Kingborough Mayor Dean Winter. He had hoped to run in Franklin but was given the cold shoulder by the pre-selectors. And we all know why. It's because he's not union enough. The Labor leader insists she has control of the party. I'm 100% confident that the, I've got the support of the party and I've got the best team to deliver a majority Labor government. Mr Winter has stood for Labor before. 27-year-old hopeful Dean Winter hoping to grab the seat of Hobart for Labor in today's Legislative Council election. Several former Labor premiers have publicly condemned the decision to shun Mr Winter, while one former Labor minister warns the decision could be fatal. I think the party has made a fatal error uh, by allowing um, Dean Winter's pre-selection to not go forward by voting him out of pre-selection. Pundit suggests a retirement of Will Hodgman in the seat could have seen some votes flow to Labor, an opportunity which may have been squandered. Well, I think it shows that uh, Labor has resorted to its old factionalism at the expense of trying to put together a kind of winning team. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Yeah. The Liberals are committing to spend millions improving TAS TAFE if re-elected, promising dozens more teachers, new student accommodation and training facilities. But Labor remains adamant it's a case of smoke and mirrors, with the Premier having plans to privatise the education and training provider. Driving home the message. <laughs> A TAS TAFE, and I'll make this point very clearly, that will remain in public hands. The Liberals announcing $98.5 million towards improving TAFE with a particular focus on the regions. Where we'll see a $12 million investment into uh, new student accommodation that will allow, of course, greater access for uh, our students in rural and regional areas. Also part of the package, 100 more teachers will be hired over four years. We need to be able to offer market-based salaries to ensure that we can attract the best people to train our young tradies, apprentices, trainees across a whole range of areas moving forward. What the Premier has announced today is a political clean-up job. He could have invested this money, including jobs, into TAFE over the last seven years. Why does it now take an election campaign for Premier Gutwin to care about public education. 
Labor remains adamant the Liberals are trying to privatise the institution. Their only plan is privatisation and their privatised TAFE model means that they won't be able to guarantee that staff. They can make as many promises as they want but the moment they turn it into a GBE, into a privatised model, they wash their hands of their ability to support students or staff. Both parties out on the campaign trail. The major topic of the 2018 election, gaming reform, coming up again. When the legislation is um, able to be put out for public consultation, then people will understand uh, how that will ensure that the policy framework that we took to the last election will be met. And importantly, um, the parliament will then consider it. Meanwhile, the Greens joined their young members door-knocking homes in the south. We've got our, uh, our secret weapon for good, uh, which is the Tasmanian Young Greens. So I've, I feel really good and I know that we've got um, five terrific lead candidates and we're in the process now of making sure that uh, we take 25 candidates to, to the election. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. A pink, blue and white flag has been raised over Hobart Town Hall, recognising Tasmania's transgender and gender diverse communities. Around 60 people joining advocates in a first for the state, marking Transgender Day of Visibility for Wednesday and continuing the fight against stigma and discrimination. Just an incredibly important message to a, a small group of people who are probably some of the most marginalised in, in Tasmanian society, but then it, that also sent a bigger message. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really good to see how far we have come and the fact that so many people were able to make it today um, just goes to show how important it is to so many people. Spots across Hobart also set to be lit up with the transgender colours this week. Speculation has emerged over the future of Hobart's iconic Dark Mofo Festival. Rumours claiming the winter celebration could be scrapped and replaced from next year. It comes off the back of a controversial artwork, a British flag soaked in the blood of First Nations people being pulled from this year's festival following community backlash, leading to apologies from Mona founder David Walsh and creative director Lee Carmichael. Dark mofo organisers were unavailable to comment. Hobart motorists have faced minor traffic delays after a car caught a light this afternoon. Smoke was sent billowing over the southern outlet as crews fought to bring the blaze under control. Luckily, no one was injured. The cause is still being investigated. A new Easter initiative is launched in the Derwent Valley, pushing for more Tasmanian children to develop a love of books. Educators saying reading is not only fundamental for early development, it can also strengthen the bond with parents. Baskets in hand, this flurry of children searching for hidden treats. The real hunt, however, uncovering a very special egg just in time for Easter. This little egg is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we read to the egg and sing to the egg and play with the egg and talk to the egg. Um, it's going to go all around the Durant Valley to all the children. The nationwide Paint the Town Red initiative, launching in Tasmania today, here at Tanara Child and Family Centre, encouraging young children and their parents to pick up a book. This not only builds this beautiful, healthy brain, it also sets our little ones up for reading and writing when they start school, which in turn gives them the best possible life opportunities. Local parents supporting the push, eager to raise the next generation of readers. We usually do two or three books before bed um, and I always find I normally start reading and then she'll want to take the book and read to mum, won't you? Do you like reading? Yeah. It's a beautiful way to connect with your child and um, especially for me, I um, do it in another language and his dad does it in another language and it's a, it's a nice way to bond. While also aiming to boost the state's literacy rates. Tasmania at the moment is really hot on literacy and communication. We know that our children are vulnerable in this area um, and we know that it's, it's simple things from birth which as I said are singing, reading, playing and talking to our children where it all starts. Now she is a storyteller because always I'm reading to her. She is now telling stories. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian cyclists have snapped up medals at the National Track Championships with Hamish McKenzie claiming gold in blistering fashion, while Richie Port has returned to the podium in Spain. Even on the footpath, Port was in good company, sharing the Volta Catalunya podium with his Ineos Grenadiers teammates Geraint Thomas and Adam Yates. The trio had earlier held off advances from rival team Movistar around the six-lap circuit, but Port and co reign supreme. It's the first time a team has gone one, two and three at the Tour in more than 60 years. 
At Lake Barrington, Tasmania's lightweight women's quad skulls claimed an emphatic gold in the National Rowing Championships. Georgia Nesbitt led the crew alongside Kate Hall, Eve Muir and Annika Reardon. A home victory. Across they go. Tasmania first. Tasmania has now won the event six times in the past 12 years. Nine Tasmanian clubs and schools medalled at the championships. Hewan, the best of the locals. In Brisbane, glorious gold for Hamish McKenzie at the National Track Championships. Mere hours after qualifying, the Tasmanian backed up in the under-19 individual pursuit final, finishing around two seconds off the world record time and earning the praise of the commentary team. That is almost the ride of the series. Uh, I'm going to nominate that right now. And in the NPL, South Hobart coach Ken Morton says it was special to beat Devonport at Valley Road. The 1-0 scoreline came off Nick Morton's boot, but the coach says it was down back where the game was truly won. We're a, a team that is noted to go forward and play exciting attacking football, but we're also pushed back a fair bit in this game as well and we had to defend defend well. So our, our young goalkeeper Nick, Nick O'Connell was very commanding in goal. It's probably one of the best feelings I've had in my football career here. It's the first time I've been up there and we've, we've taken points. Um, the boys were very happy after the game. I thought we did, did our jobs very well. The club also walked away with the points in the women's statewide league 3-1 over Kingborough. Nikki Mutsatsos scoring a brace to the delight of her sister. We all worked really well as a team yesterday but my sister, she's being a bit of a show off, scoring lots of goals yesterday, so I was very proud of her. Good evening. Eddieston Point out top today with 20 degrees. Hobart 18, Launceston 17, Burnie and Devonport a bit cooler. Temperatures did sit between 3 and 6 below average. St Helens 19, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park 18, Strawn Low Head and the Island 17 degrees, just 9 the high for Lyawini. Areas of clear sky over the northeast, but cloud did move across most other districts. Convective cloud over the east and southeast of the mainland, cloud containing thunderstorms off the top end and plenty south of that big high over the bite, which we see there now moving towards us tomorrow, extending a ridge over Tasmania and most of the continent. A weak trough over the WA coast. Winds northwest to southwest, tending more westerly over the north and to 20 to 30 knots over southern waters, so we have a strong wind warning there. That's from Tasman Island to southeast Cape. Tuesday's forecast, partly cloudy for Hobart, 22 the top, 19 for Adventure Bay, Taralea, 18 after a coolish evening. 8 degrees for Launceston overnight, 23 the top tomorrow, 22 for Devonport, bit of cloud about but fine, Bridport, 21 degrees. Burnie, partly cloudy and 22, 19 for Strawn, bit of cloud for Marawar as well, 19 the high. 21 the high for St Helens, partly cloudy for Swansea, 22 the top and 20 for White Mark on Flinders. UV a moderate 5, sun above the horizon for 11 hours 43 minutes tomorrow. On Wednesday, patchy early fog, then fine apart from a shower over the west. A fine day on Thursday, sunny over the north and Bass Strait, Swansea 27 degrees. And on Good Friday, another fine partly cloudy day to start the Easter break. Sunny and 30 in Perth, fine as well in Adelaide, 20 and becoming sunny in Melbourne, partly cloudy and 23 in Sydney, a shower or two for Brisbane. Bit of cloud around Hobart, it's 15, 15 also in Launceston, Devonport 14 and cloudy. The long range forecast for Easter Saturday, Kim, is for temperatures to rise quite significantly. 27 in Hobart, 26 for St Helens and 25 for Launceston. But of course uh, the cooling comes in on Sunday for the Easter egg hunts. Temperatures gradually dropping right down to about the 17, 18 and 19 degree mark and showers over the west for Easter Sunday. A bunny might be getting a little wet. Thank you very much, Merv.